Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this our first edition of NTV Sports Page for the year 2021. Today is Tuesday, 5th January, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, CBIS receives a special football, and in our feature for this evening, Nevis receives cricket gear. We'll take this break, and I'll be right back. Eliminate breeding today. Keep mosquitoes away. Here are some ways to eliminate mosquito breeding sources around your home. Tightly cover water drums, barrels, tanks, cisterns, and septic tanks. Safely dispose of buckets, old tires, and any other unused containers and objects that hold water. Scrub the inside of pet containers, flower vases, and dish drainers every other day. Remove water from flower pot saucers and replace with damp sand. Overturn buckets, watering cans, wheelbarrows and other containers and store them in a sheltered place. Adequately treat swimming pools and discard water from portable pools. Check roof gutters for chokes regularly. Fill up exposed tree holes, plant axils and ground depressions with sand. If you are going for a holiday, empty toilet bowls and tanks and cover gully traps. Reduce the source. Eliminate breeding today. Keep mosquitoes away. This message was brought to you by the Nevis Health Promotion Unit in collaboration with Nevis Television 8. Well, I'm back and we begin with football. On Tuesday, 22nd December, a very special presentation was made at the Bat Village Playing Field to the Sicily Brown Integrated School by Miss Christine Walwyn. Let's take in that presentation. On behalf of the global org organization, A Ball for All, it is my pleasure to donate this ball to the Sicily Brown Integrated School. This ball is specially designed for the visually impaired, and as you notice, it makes noise. So the visually impaired is able to hear the ball when it's approaching rather than look for the ball. Uh, this is a project that is designed to give a ball to every country around the world. And St. Kitts and Nevis is the 160th country ha that has received this ball. So it is my pleasure again to donate it. On behalf of Cicely Brown, I would like to say thank you for the ball. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh. On behalf of Cicely Brown, I would like to say thank you for the youths of the future for giving us this uniform.
We'll take this break and I'll be back with our feature for this evening. Listen closely and you will hear what climate change might sound like. $30 for a hand of bananas. Severe drought could destroy banana plants and drive food prices up. And now we can see the dead coral reef below us. Dead coral? I thought it was alive. No, it's dead. If you look at the pictures, you can see what the coral used to look like. Oh, wow. Natural wonders like coral reefs are disappearing. But listen closely again, and you can hear the solution. People disposing of garbage responsibly and not in drains and rivers. People responsibly discarding engine oil. Our climate may be changing, but so can we. Making small changes together can have a huge effect on reducing the impacts of climate change. Act now. Rally. Rethink. Respond. This message is brought to you by the OECS Secretariat with funded assistance from USAID. Well, I'm back, and tonight, cricket is in the spotlight. On Friday, 18 December, former Nevis cricketer Augustine Merchant made a presentation of cricket gear acquired from Mr. Mara Lowe of the United Kingdom through her charitable organization known as Cricket Kindness Charity. The presentation ceremony took place in the conference room at the Disaster Management Office at Long Point. Tonight, we feature that ceremony. Good morning, everyone. This morning is a very exciting time for Nevis Cricket. We are very elated that we have, been, we have received a shipment of cricket gear from England. And so that has made us very, very, very pleased. And I think that this is a good way to get Nevis on the rebound, the Nevis cricket team and cricket in Nevis on a whole on the rebound. Now, let me just give a little genesis as regards how we got here. Uh, one day I was home and uh, going through some newspaper, I realized that Jamaica and Antigua got a shipment of cricket gear. And that, you know, really piqued my interest. And I called the president of the Cricket Association, Mr. Carlisle Powell. And I said, you know, Mr. Powell, you know, these people have got some cricket gear. It would be quite good if Nevis could get, get some cricket gear. So he told me, pursue it. I would try and see what support I could get. And that I did. I eventually found the name of the person who supplied those goods. And I said, let me call. And I realized the person was living in Australia. And so I mailed the call to Australia. No answer. Then I, the next best thing I said, let me see if I could find an email. I looked around and I did that and I found the email. And I wrote this lady. She didn't know me, I didn't know her. But I wrote her indicating that Nevis had a very rich history of cricket and I named some of the outstanding test players from Nevis. And uh, we, the cricket at this stage is on the down, just like the rest in this cricket. And uh, after a week or so, I didn't hear anything. So I started to become a little bit despondent. And lo and behold, two days after, I got this letter from this lady by the name of Tamara Law, and she said that uh, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to respond quickly because I have moved from Australia now to England, and uh, you know I was you know trying to get things sorted out, and so I didn't reply that promptly. Anyhow, I know of some of the history of cricket in Nevis, and then she started to tell me about the Livingston Sardin coaching uh, place here in on Nevis and a few other things. And I said, good, she on the same wavelength like, uh, that, that I am. And she told me then that she is going to help. I should say that the Tamara belonged to an institution by the name of Cricket Charity, Cricket Kindness Charity. 
And so I, we continued to correspond. Uh, all that time I kept the president of the Cricket Association up to date with what I was doing. And then she told me, you know, the English season wasn't very long this year. And, you know, she was a bit, it was a bit difficult to get cricket gear, but she's going to help me. And I felt good. Uh, about two weeks after, she told me, I'm going to be shipping some stuff to you. I have collected some stuff, and I'm going to send some stuff to you. And one of this, uh, I will give you an idea as regards some of what we have here. We have 26 bats for seniors, 28 bats for juniors, 97 balls, 30 pads, 30 gloves, uh, a hoop, helmet, I think 11 helmet, shirts, t-shirts, 40, along with some other stuff. And I think that this is quite a very, very commendable effort by Tamara. And I think really, you know, I would like to really commend Tamara for her outstanding charitable gesture. And uh, I am going to promise Tamara that the Navy's Cricket Association, the Livingston Southern Coaching, you know, what you call it? Academy, yes, would make full use along with the Ministry of Education sports program and the women's cricket, they would all make full use of these cricket gear. Now, I have had some discussion with the president as regards the running of a league in, in Nevis using some of these things. And hopefully when he comes forward, he will talk a little bit about what we have spoken about. And so, as I said, I am very, very, very elated. And once again, I will want to thank Tamara for this wonderful gesture. Thanks much. And I would want to ask the president of the Navy Cricket Association, Mr. Carlyle Powell, to come forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Merchant, former Easterns and Navy player himself. I want to publicly thank the charity that has given so generously to Nevis and to Nevis Cricket. And we know we are just on the rebound from a long period when there was no cricket played in Nevis. And uh, we started with a T20 competition with eight teams, which is going very, very well. We play every Saturday and every Sunday. This tournament will conclude in the middle of January. And at the end of that tournament, it is my proposal, having had some serious discussions with Mr. Merchant, that the Cricket Association consider hosting a coaching clinic similar to one which was first introduced to Nevis by then President Ronald Powell. And this coaching clinic, we propose that we'll use a lot of our past players. And this time, because of the COVID restrictions, we'll keep it internal. And Keith Atherton, our West Indies international who is here with us, is hearing this for the first time. But I'm sure it will not surprise him that the Cricket Association will ask him to be a part of that coaching program and to help to coach our batsmen. We intend to do coaching on wicket keeping, fielding, batting, fast bowling, slow bowling, both the off break and the leg break varieties. And so we'll speak with our cricket committee We'll select our list of coaches, and right after the conclusion of our T20 competition, before we start a second competition, we intend to have that coaching program where we will invite players from all of the different clubs, all of the different schools, people with obvious potential and quality, and we will spend some time over perhaps two weekends trying to enforce the skills that they have. When it was done in the past, it worked wonderfully, and there is no reason why it shouldn't work this well again. But in addition to that, it will give us the opportunity to use some of this wide extent of gear that we have just received. I mean, Navy's cricket has not had a gift like this in years. 
And so I want to reach out and compliment Augustine Merchant. He's the man who started the whole thing, who was very steadfast in seeing it through, and who ensured that we have the equipment that we have here today, which we have already set up a committee, and that committee will decide how we will distribute the equipment. But first of all, we want to put it to use in the coaching program. So I want to thank again Mr. Merchant. I want to thank Jamie, who has been invaluable in terms of his assistance. Every time I ask for something, he has found a way to say yes. And that has been a tremendous source of inspiration to the Cricket Association. And so I call Jamie to speak next. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I stand here this morning very elated to be a part of this brief but significant ceremony where, as an island, we have received a gift from an organization in the United Kingdom. Uh, one of the challenges with sports in Nevis, and in particular cricket, is that equipment is often expensive, especially for our young people. And for us to get a donation like this, this will go a long way in us when we go to the development of this sport, say, in Nevis. But before I proceed, I would like to commend Mr. Merchant for facilitating this process. I remember when we had the conversation, I was very excited about the possibilities of what we could get and what, how we can use them to achieve the desired goal of taking Nevis cricket back to the top. So Mr. Merchant, once again, thank you for your efforts, for facilitating the process. And because of you, we are standing here today. I would also like to take this opportunity to commend the Nevis Cricket Association and the work that they have been doing since the new association has been in place. As the president would have, as the president would have mentioned, we have been trying our best to work closely together because as guardians of the game of cricket, it is our responsibility to coexist in order for the sport to get to the high heights that is required. And so, Mr. President, thanks for being a partner. Um, the Department of Sports has a mandate and has a role to play when it comes to the development of cricket. But as you know, with anything, one entity cannot do it on its own. It requires partners. So the Cricket Association, Mr. Keith Atherton and his academy, persons like Mr. Merchant who have a genuine love for the development of the sport, Together, we are the ones who are going to take cricket to the next level. Finally, I would like to, from the Department of Sports and on behalf of the Ministry of Sports, thank the organization in England, um, Cricket Kindness Charity, if I'm not mistaken, for this wonderful donation. And I assure you that we are going to put this to good use and you're going to see the results of your donation in the not too distant future. Thank you. And so I will now call on as I mentioned, it takes partners to achieve a goal. When I call on Mr. Keith Atherton, former West Indies player and national cricket coach. Morning, guys. It gives me great pleasure of being here, being a part of this um, significant um, idea that came about by uh, Mr. Merchant. Uh, I want to say thanks again for the contribution that you, you, you're being given. Uh, and also to the charity over in England, because um, when, you have, when you have people can take time out to do things like this, it's, it's, it's very important. It's very good for young cricketers coming up. As Jamie said earlier on, cricket equipment is very, very expensive. Um, a full kit could run you close to $1,000. And they have some parents who are not in a position to accumulate stuff like these. A matter of fact, um, even just a cricket bat that just might cost two and three hundred dollars a time during your cricket bats. I must let you guys know that um, on a smaller scale, I had something done like this um, in Sinkets. I have contributed a lot of stuff in Sinkets and also in Nevis. Um, so I have an idea what's going on here. What I so like about this is that um, most of my stuff were junior stuff, uh, junior gears, and um, a mochi. When and Augustine talked to me about uh, the gears coming over, and he said they're going to be senior stuff, I said, well, that's a great combination. Um, what we are doing here in Nevis is, is pretty good. And not a lot of people are saying cricket is on the down low, you know, but <laughs> I always... I always feel optimistic that 
you know, once we work together, we work in collaboration, the Department of Sports, the Cricket Association, and obviously my cricket academy that I recently opened here in Nevis, I think that we can, we can do wonders. Um, everything tend to be falling in place, so to speak, because, I mean, look at this happening now. In the recent times, we had the Livingston Sargent Cricket Practice Facility recently open, and now you have gays coming along. A lot of kids do come around and ask for, ask for cricket equipment, and a lot of times it's, it's pretty difficult to get it, you know, in an instant. A lot of time it takes time to get it, and coming out of England, is, um, it's a long way off, and most of the time it do come by, by boat, you know. So um, I just want to say thanks again. It's, it's, it's a great pleasure being here and, and seeing something like this. It really goes a long way. Um, I hope that these youngsters can understand the effort that being made by Mr. Merchant and, um, and how we are trying our best to make sure that the, the gear is being used the right way. Because there are some people who think that um, once they hear about cricket equipment, they should just come and get them and just go and use them to their liking. It shouldn't be like that. There should always be a purpose behind what we are doing, and it should always be objectives. Um, one of the things that really drives me in, in this cricket is, is um, the talent that always around. Always. We always have the talent. And um, it's one thing to have the talent. If you don't have the, the necessary resources to nurture those talents, we're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to get what we want out of the sport. I, I still feel like that we're supposed to always have somebody on the West Indies team and players behind knocking to get onto the team because we have what it takes when it comes to talent. But we all know that talent doesn't, doesn't um, take you all the way. You only take you part of the way. You know, we need that sort of discipline and the right attitude, the right temperament, There's so many other things. And they, I think there is where we come into play at times to remind these youngsters that, you know, they got what it takes. So let us all rally around them and continue to work in collaboration because it's very important. Thanks again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Let me uh, indicate to our viewing public uh, these are just part of the cricket gear. These are not all of the cricket gear. We have the, 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 a substantial amount uh, in, in, in stock. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Keith Atherton, Mr. Powell, and Mr. Jamir Claxton. Uh, Mr. Keith Atherton, I remember, I've been his coach for the Navy team as a youngster making the Navy team for the first time, <laughs> and he has gone a long way, you know, somebody who I've always respected. So, uh, now, I didn't mention Reverend Alistair Rollins. He's here with me, and he has been the person behind me because he knows my interest in game. Now, both of us uh, are contemporaries, and whereas I went the cricket way, he went the, the, the football way. I wouldn't tell you about his exploit in football. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he has been the person who has been. And what we are hoping to do, now I indicated that we want it to be Mr. Powell, the Cricket Association, Mr. Jamir, and Mr. and Mr. Atherton, and Mr. Atherton as the person who would be leading whatever, you know. Uh, but Mr. Allen and I would be there with you. We sit on the committee because we want to make sure, as Mr. Atherton said, that people just don't come, take up the bat, go along, and that's the end of it. <laughs> I want that in the next couple of years. Now, I should say that I am one of the greatest beggars in Nevis, I believe, when it comes to asking for things. And I do not believe this is the end. I believe I'm going back to Tara again. <laughs> for, some, for some more stuff. But I would imagine that she would not readily give us if she learned, or she hears, that what she sent for us was not put to good use. So we, I, I want to ensure that this is being put to good use so that maybe at the end of the year, I could say this and the auspices of the Cricket Association Sports Department and myself, we, we, we were able to do this and I am thinking, I'm just thinking aloud, maybe 
we could get 10,000 from each parish in Nevis to come to the park and you know, have the coaching, the, the, uh, the bowling and the batting on the top, the wicket keeping, the fielding below and so on. And we have a number of, of, of test players, you know, Carl Ellen and we have spoken about, and I think he had made contact because one of the person, Everett Sardin, saw me, and it, I think he did indicate that uh, Mr. Paul spoke to him. And he's quite willing to, to do the wicket keeping because, you know, we, we need those skills. And the thing why it, this is necessary, when we were growing up, we played cricket almost every day, every hour of the day. So we, maybe we didn't need any coaching then. <laughs> because as they say, practice made perfect. We were practicing so often that it basically made perfect. But nowadays when people, cricket is almost, uh, almost like a foreign language. We, they need to have coaching. You know, because I, I, I have looked at some of the, the, the matches which Mr. Powell indicated. And to be honest, you saw some glimpses of, of talent, but people can't feel, can't back the basic and so on. You know, and as I said, these would only come with coaching. And as I said, we have Keith, we have some Nevis, other Nevisian who have made it to the test level and very far up, they're quite willing to assist. So it is left to Mr. Jamir. I know this is the Ministry of Sports responsibility and the Cricket Association. And you know, we would, want, we would be there with you because we want to see this happening. Now, in closing, I would wish to thank a few persons. One, I would like to thank Ms. Pat, what's her son, you know? Pat Claxton. Uh, she was the person who cleared all this stuff for us free. It seems as if uh, Pat is internationally known. Uh, Tamara told me that somebody sent Pat's name to, to her, and that's how she got in contact with Pat, and Pat kindly uh, cleared them for, for, for us. So she did have a, a round of applause. Then the other person who I'd like to thank is the Honorable Minister. Eric Evelyn. Mr. Evelyn was approached, I think on two occasions, uh, Father Rollin and myself, we visited his office and indicated to him that the Tamara indicate that once we could get duty-free concession on them, you know, she would send them. And Mr. Evelyn didn't have any hesitation whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we had the letter the same the afternoon we, we went to the office. And so he has been very helpful, and we want to acknowledge his, his, his appreciation. And as I said, uh, the Cricket Association, Mr. Powell, he had asked me to come and talk to them about it. I went, and I think they were all elated and uh, supportive. So I want to thank Mr. Powell for that. And uh, here we are. And tomorrow, we want to thank you very, very, very much. That's our package for this evening. I am Curtis Morton reminding you that you can watch sports if you're not fit. But to play sports requires fitness, diligence, and sacrifice. Have a good night.